G'day guys, how are you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This evening I'm going to be doing a review of a low budget slasher film from the United States, English language, released in the year 2013, directed by Jason Christopher, and this film is called Punishment. This is the Australian title, it's also known as Down the Road and No One Gets Out Alive, so I'm not sure why they have multiple titles. But to help you remember, I will leave the titles in the description bar below. So if you can't find it under one, please look for it under the other. Now, a story to punishment is as follows. Hunter Eath has his life turned upside down when his young daughter is killed by a drunk teenage driver. In mourning, depression and anger, Hunter disappears and is rumoured to have moved away from Braden Woods. As years go by, Hunter and his devastating story evolve into a myth. A myth that many consider being just that, until a group of partying teenagers are brutally murdered one by one. So the movie starts off with Hunter, he is an, a, um, an older sort of man with a young daughter. Now, very irresponsible parenting leads the daughter to being hit by a, a teen drunk driver. Now, she was playing hopscotch on the road, so what the father was doing letting her play hopscotch on the road, I don't know. But anyway, that's not the point. Irresponsible parenting is not what drives the film. Basically, the film is about this teen drunk driver hits this girl and the father is left devastated, obviously. So over the years, the father has lost his sanity and his story has evolved into a bit of a myth. And the myth has it that he has relocated to the woods. Now, this is where he is avenging his daughter's death by murdering every teenager that he comes across in these woods, usually campers. So this has evolved into a myth, and a lot of people just think it's just a myth, and there's no truth to it. So a group of friends decide to go camping in the woods, and they're talking about this myth, and to their horror, there might be a little bit more truth to this myth than they first thought. So what happens from that uh, point on, it turns from fun to terror for this group of friends, and who survives and what happens is something you're going to have to find out for yourself, because that's as far as I'm going with my rundown. Now my thoughts on the film. If you're a true uh, diehard slasher film fan, I would say definitely go out and check this one out, but if you're only a casual sort of a slasher film fan like me, this is not the type of film that's really going to get you suck it into the subgenre. It's not a movie that's going to be used as a recruitment force. Uh, it's a movie that it has its moments, it's not a terrible film, but unfortunately the positives to the movie also come with the negatives, so it's kind of like it shoots itself in the foot on more than one occasion. So the good things are that prevent it from being a crap film is that it's actually well shot. Our cinematography is very good, but I think the lack of budget really helped contribute to a very morbid feeling, and that morbid feeling is um, it's what drives the film forward. Um, very dull colouring, and I actually thought the budget constraints in this on this occasion, as is the case with some other low-budget filmmaking, really plays well in its hands. So the visuals are very, very well done. It's a very downbeat, it's a very cruel, and a very depressing sort of atmosphere that the director wanted, and that's exactly what he got. Uh, so as I said, very dull colouring. The, the soundtrack is very dull and haunted, so nothing is really excessive in the audio or the visuals. So visually, this you know, the director has a keen eye, and I feel that he can shoot a movie very well. So with a bigger budget, who knows what this guy could do. It's a very brutal film. Now, the brutality is really uh, very hard-hitting. It's not excessive in the gore. If you're after a complete gore fest, there are some gory scenes in it, but the gore is few and far between. But it's just very nasty, very high impact. So it's definitely not for the, the faint of heart. Uh, you've got to have a strong stomach to get through this because there are some torture scenes that are quite cringeworthy. It had me cringing on quite a few occasions. So that is something I really like, and that's something that is necessary. It's um, absolutely crucial for a slasher film to work is to have some good kills and have some brutality. Now, yes, it does deliver on the brutality, but unfortunately there is also a negative with the kills um, that also comes with that positive, which I'm going to go into a little bit later. But I also felt another positive to the film is that they gave the killer an insight. They gave the killer some depth, therefore it come across as a human being rather than a straight-out killer like Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers. So I really like that aspect to it, that you get an insight into the father. Although you don't condone his actions, you feel sorry for him and you can understand why he's doing this. And it doesn't feel like he's a killing machine. It just feels like he is a human being who's gone through something horrible and and the, he's a victim of circumstances, that these circumstances involving his child has forced him to become an absolute maniac, and he's killing these people, and you get a strong sense of sympathy for this guy, although it's not in-depth, um, you know, he's, he's not a rich sort of character, there is enough that, that depth there to really give him a human touch, and that's something that is lacking in a lot of slasher films, and therefore that's what kind of gives it the impression that it's a little bit more than just a popcorn film. It is very hard-hitting, and I just thought that little bit of humanity to the killer made it you know, a little bit of a, a fresh, uh, fresh breath of um, air. 
So, you know, they had positives, and that's what prevents it from being a, a disaster. But, however, having said that, as I said, with the positives come negatives. Now, the positives for the visuals are kind of destroyed by the characters. Now, the characters were fairly decently done, very, fairly realistic. Now, you've got the annoying guys, but they weren't annoying to the point where I really wanted to see them killed. However, there was one character that really resembled Alan from The Hangover. He's kind of autistic. Uh, he just wasn't normal, and he was getting himself in these comic sort of situations. And that destroyed the atmosphere that the visuals had going for. I thought that that was a very strange character to have him there. It's a very serious feeling that the movie had but yet his character was just very out of place and some of the scenes they were funny but it took away that realism it took away that sort of disturbing cruel atmosphere that the film had going so it kind of it was a very uh, it was a contrast between the character and the environment that the filmmaker wanted so to have him in there he was pretty much the the comedy relief but the movie didn't require comedy relief it wasn't one of those movies so the atmosphere that the director has created has been tarnished by this one character who was there for comedy relief. So I really didn't like that. Then you've got the brutality. Now, yes, the brutality is there. However, the creativity in the kills is non-existent. Uh, there's a sledgehammer that's used in quite a few of the kills. And once you see one kill, yes, it's really hard-hitting, but then it gets very repetitive and very stale and very old. So the creativity is not there, and it felt like the director had the visuals, had the brutality, but he just didn't know what to do with it and where to go with it. So I didn't really like that. Now, the killer... Uh, there is a moment towards the end of the film when he breaks into this monologue. He goes on about how, his, how he's feeling about his daughter's death, how he feels about teenagers. But yet this is what we already know, and therefore it halts the continuity of the story. So it goes along nicely. It's a horror, 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 and then all of a sudden, bang, it goes into this lull. And he's basically um, telling the, his victims, okay, I'm going to go in on a speech. I'm going to talk for about five minutes. That'll give you some time to make something up and try to get away. So he puts on the timer and he goes through this monologue and he's saying how devastated he is and how much he will never get over the uh, death of his daughter. That is something we already know. Yet he, the director, I don't know if it was lack of um, ability or lack of confidence in letting the, the viewer know what's going on by how the film's unfolding. We know that he's devastated by his daughter's death, so why does the director have to make it obvious and tell us what uh, we already know and halt the progression of the story to the fact that it feels like that one particular scene is completely out of place. It's a horror film, but that one particular scene is just drama. And he's just talking about it, and we're getting you know sympathy for him. We're supposed to get sympathy for him, but we already had sympathy. And when he's going on and on about it, you're kind of thinking, yeah, okay, come on, let's get back to the kills. So it really takes it, and once again, that is another moment of the film that's completely out of place. And that's something I really didn't like. Then you've got the ending, which was a cop-out. I thought it was a pathetic ending. I would have liked it to go down a different road. There were a few other roads that it could have gone down, but I thought that for the ending, it was a cop-out. It was leaving the door open for a sequel, which I think will never happen. But it was just a very weak ending, and that's something that really disappointed me as well. So in the end, what you get from this film it is a slasher film it's a modern slasher film it it pays sort of respect to older slasher movies the setting of the woods uh, a little bit of Jason Voorhees a little bit of Michael Myers I guess you could say and it gives it a, a, a sense of realism but the positives are outweighed by the negatives because the director kind of shoots himself in the foot the positives that he makes come with negatives so it's always dragging it down and it never really gets a chance to shine so all in all you get a pretty empty experience in what should have been a memorable experience because the director gave the character, the main character of the villain, a chance to uh, get some sympathy, but that sympathy is never fully utilised. Therefore, in the end, what you're left with is wanting a hell of a lot more, and I was actually disappointed with what I got because the platform for a very solid film was there, but it just had too many negatives to become a good one. So I'm not recommending this film. I'm going to end up giving it two stars. Two stars because visually it was okay, and also I, I like the the fact that it had a sense of realism to the violence and the killer. Uh, but the ending, as I said, destroyed a lot of that element as well. So a lot to uh, dislike about the movie, unfortunately, so it is definitely not coming recommended. So it's two stars for the American low-budget slasher film, Punishment. All right, guys, that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, keep watching movies, and I'll see you later.